have your child attained puberty recently and is your child experiencing a lot of musculoskeletal and body aches and pains then this is something which is not uncommon there are many children who are likely to experience musculoskeletal pain at this stage of life what are the conditions that could give this musculoskeletal aches and pain in your child i am going to discuss all of them in today's video and at the same time i will also recommend some of the solution for this problem so if your child is suffering from any kind of musculoskeletal pain make sure to watch this video till the end because you might find your answer why your child is exactly experiencing pain let's get started the number one cause for a child at puberty to experience pain is due to a condition which is called as growing pain now what do you mean by growing pain well when a child attains puberty there is a sudden change in the bone shape bone size bone height at the same time there is a change in the muscle length muscle strength and the muscle width all of this is also associated with the hormonal changes in the body whenever a child attains puberty there could be an imbalance in the speed at which the bone is growing the speed at which the muscle is growing and the hormonal balance that is going through in the body whenever there will be an imbalance the child is likely to experience growing pains these pains are very common in leg especially in the calf region in the spine and in the hip region that's why you will observe that the children between the age group of 12 to 15 will commonly say that they experience knee pain back pain shoulder pain heel pain etc majority of time it is due to growing pain the best solution to solve this problem is to take care of the nutrition part of the child at this stage there is a lot of calcium requirement that the child have at this stage so make sure that your child is having calcium rich diet at this stage of life at the same time when it comes to girls they need extra iron folic acid supplementation or diet that incorporate a lot of folic acid sources is crucial at this stage of life at the same time kids are more likely to eat junk food at this stage of life and these junk food majority of time is processed and increases the risk of inflammation in the body this inflammation does not allow your muscles to relax and thus increases the pain level so try to limit the intake of junk food at this stage of life apart from that doing regular physical activity maintaining a good physical fitness and if a child is involved in any of the athletic activity then doing a right sort of warm up and cool down will help the child to prevent this kind of pain the second reason why a child experiences pain in the puberty age is because of this particular condition which is called as osgood schlatter disease to simplify this what happens is there is a bone in our knee which is called as patella bone in a layman term i can say the knee cap bone now in front of this knee cap bone there is a ligament there is a tendon there are many structures now this tendon gets inflamed at the age due to again changes in the hormonal balance and the length and the height of the bone this leads to pain especially around the knee joint children with this condition will experience a very sharp nagging pain in front side of the knee and this can last for long time children who are involved in very high intensity physical activity like football basketball cricket might feel of sharp shooting pain in front of knee which could be a fear cause of concern for a lot of parents but worry not this is a condition which will take its own time to recover all they need is a good support good rest and good strengthening of the knee muscles to overcome this challenge and if the pain is more then definitely they should go for physiotherapy sessions slowly the condition will come under control the third condition that also lead to pain in children especially around the heel is the condition called as tebers disease here the heel bone gets the heel bone gets inflamed at heel bone there is an insertion of plantar fascia this is a structure that like a shock absorber in your heel region this inflammation gives a lot of heel pain to the children especially who have lot of physical activity that involves standing for long period of time 
they require regular stretching of the foot muscles ice pack application over the heel region and exercises to be done on a regular basis if you don't know what are the can exercises i have made a video separately on doing heel exercises i i will add the card in the above section so that you can watch it this condition again will take its own time to recover and relax all you need to do is make sure that there is a proper footwear or a sole sole which is given to the child so that the friction can be reduced and pain can be further prevented that takes me to the fourth condition that is very common in children at the age of puberty is scoliosis scoliosis is nothing but the spine turning s shaped this is due to a congenital problem which means many children are born with a spinal curvature which is not normal and sometimes it is acquired as well this happens when certain group of muscles are tight and certain group of muscles are weak whenever child attain growth spurt this starts becoming more prominent and this prominent scoliosis also leads to lot of back pain and spine pain issues early identification of scoliosis and taking corrective measures are crucial at this stage because this is a progressive condition eventually it will turn up into a serious problem if not addressed at the early age so if you observe that your child's spine is getting s shaped you should go for an posture analysis for your child so that it can be identified and detected earlier and can be corrected as well physiotherapist are the ones who can do this posture analysis and prescribe exercises we do first and posture analysis of the child and based on that we suggest an home exercise program the child can do at its own pace under the supervision of a physiotherapist if you are interested to know more about this program feel free to reach out to us the contact details are mentioned in the description box below that takes me to the next condition that is very common at the age of puberty and that is joint pains as there is a sudden growth of bone joints also takes its time to relax there is a sudden change and shift in the entire body anatomy which makes joint pain very common as i mentioned loss of calcium at this stage is more and that's why it is important that the supplementation and the diet part is taken care of and regular physical activity is also incorporated in child's life so that they are free from this repeated pain that they experience that takes me to the next problem that's very common and that is sports injury children they are going to play they are going to be active they are going to be part of athletic or physical activity since there is a very sudden shift in the height of the bone shape of the bone density of the bone at the same time for the muscles as well they are more prone to develop sports related injuries injuries like ligament injuries muscle strains are very common muscle spasms at the same time muscle tear ankle sprain ankle tears are very common there are also a very high risk of developing major ligament injuries around the knee joint acl ligament injury pcl ligament injury mcl ligament injuries are the sum to name few these require very hardcore intervention medical intervention and medical supervision so if your child suffers from any of a muscular skeletal injury that's related to an athletic activity it's highly important that you show to a orthopedician first and then only start physiotherapy solutions that takes me to the another common problem and that is muscle strain and spasms children these days are very active on using devices especially mobile phones for due to which they constantly strain their neck and the shoulder muscles which increases the risk of hunchback at the same time strains the muscles around the neck and shoulder region which lead to neck and shoulder pain which eventually in future turn up into the form of cervical spondylosis the idea is to prevent these conditions to develop at first place this can be done with the help of doing regular posture correction exercises if your child is having hunchback or is developing hunchback definitely it will start with muscle strain 
So make sure that every two hours or three hours you give some posture correction exercises to your child so that this can be prevented. The next condition is more prevalent in girls and that is dysmenorrhea. Yes, when girls attain puberty, they are going to develop their menstrual cycles. This is a new experience for them and the uterus also contracts and this causes a lot of fear, anxiety and sometimes this dysmenorrhea also comes in the form of fear and anxiety. Dysmenorrhea is common in the initial stages and could limit their ability of physical functioning. Dysmenorrhea can be eased with the help of basic methods like hot fermentation, gentle massages and some gentle exercises. The idea is to maintain physical activity even during those days of the monthly cycles and not to stop these physical activities that helps in prevention. That takes me to the eighth condition and that is tendinitis. As I said that muscles are also growing, the tendons also develop inflammation and this inflammation leads to problems like pain around elbow, wrist, knee etc. Because these are the places where these tendons get inserted over the bone. That's where there is a lot of friction happening on the bone causing pain to develop. This can be very easily treated with simple physiotherapy methods and that's why it's ideal to see a physiotherapist whenever your child develops tendinitis. Doing regular activities and correcting the posture alignment also helps in prevention of these tendinitis. That takes me to the ninth problem, posture related pain. There are two conditions that are very common related to posture. This is called as upper cross syndrome and lower cross syndrome. What do I mean by this? Upper cross syndrome is a syndrome that lies in your neck and shoulder region and lower cross syndrome is a condition that lies in your front thigh and the lower back region. Here one group of muscles becomes tight and other group of muscles become weak. Due to this imbalance the shape of the spine changes and increases the risk of pain. This problem also causes lot of functional issues, postural changes, regular posture correction exercise or doing yoga practices on a daily basis are the best way to help prevent the posture related pain. Make sure that you incorporate certain pranayamas and yoga practices on a daily basis for your child so that they can prevent this posture related pain. The tenth problem is with the pain that is developed due to shallow breathing. This is a generalized pain that the child might observe throughout the body. This happens again due to lack of optimal breathing. Kids these days have got a lot of pressure. It is exams pressure, peer pressure, pressure that they feel from social media, parents etc etc. All of this is the cause of anxiety and fear in children. The first physiological response that the body gives to anxiety and fear is shallow breathing. When a child starts shallow breathing or else does mouth breathing at night, there is a sudden dip in the oxygen levels. When the entire body muscles are not getting adequate oxygen, it increases the risk of pain. And this generalized pain is of unknown cause and many a times whenever you will go to doctor or else and physiotherapist, this pain cause will not be diagnosable. It is crucial to identify the patterns to know is this pain coming from some other source or not. And if it is identified that yes, it's coming from stress and anxiety, it requires to be addressed immediately. Counselor, psychotherapist are the best people who can help child suffering from anxiety related psychosomatic pain. The sooner you act on this, the better it is for the future of your child. So friends, these were the top 10 conditions that could cause musculoskeletal pain in children. I hope these all factors were informative to you. Tell me in the comment section below. What are the common factors you feel your child is experiencing? We would also love to help your child if you figure out that the pain is a leading cause for the impact on quality of life. So feel free to reach out to us or, 
All the contact details are mentioned in the description box. On that note, I'll end this video here and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.